What happens when we inject cash into the economy? Does this translate one for one into aggregate measures such as GDP? Or is there a multiplier effect? In other words, does that initial infusion get magnified by some factor as it filters through the economy? Estimating these multipliers has been of key economic interest for many decades, and they are crucial for evaluating policies aimed at stimulating the economy. This paper charts new territory by using a large-scale experiment to measure this key quantity. Between 2014 and 2017, the authors worked with the NGO Give Directly and provided one-time cash transfers of approximately 1,000 US dollars to over 10,500 poor households in rural Kenya. The magnitude of this intervention was substantial. $1,000 is equivalent to 75% of average annual expenditures among recipient households, and, in total, the transfers amounted to roughly 17% of local GDP. The question of this paper is simple. What happened? Can we trace the effects of this large infusion of cash as it percolated through the economy? This type of large-scale cash transfer program has become more common in developing countries, and many researchers have studied their effects on recipients. But what sets this paper apart is the wider focus. The key question here is not how the recipients themselves were impacted, but how the ripple effects spread through the rest of the economy. To gauge these spillovers, the transfers were randomized in the following way. First, sublocations in the study area, which was located in a rural area in western Kenya, were randomly assigned to be either high or low saturation. In high saturation areas, two-thirds of villages were randomly assigned to the treatment group, with the rest in the control group. The proportions were reversed in low saturation areas. There, a third of villages were treatment, and two-thirds were control. Finally, within each treatment village, all eligible households received the transfer, while no households in control villages did. This design allows the authors to use geographic variation in exposure to the transfers. In addition to random variation in their own treatment status, some villages happen to be in areas where many of their neighbors receive transfers, while others are not. This allows the authors to study spillovers that occur across as well as within villages. To start, the authors show there are large positive impacts on households that received the transfers. Recipients spend most of the cash they receive, leading total expenditures to increase by 13.5%. This increased spending is spread across a broad range of items, and much of it takes place locally. So, a natural first step in tracing the spillovers is to look at local enterprises. Then the authors find that firms located in areas with more transfers experience large increases in revenue, with the magnitudes ranging from 29 to 45 percent. Notably, those increases occur regardless of whether or not the firm's owners themselves received a transfer, and appear to be passed on in the form of higher wages to firm employees. This, in turn, raises the question of how non-recipient households are affected by the transfers. And the striking result here is that despite not receiving any transfers themselves, over the 18 months following the intervention, these households show consumption gains of 13% as well, an amount roughly comparable to the immediate gains experienced by the treated households. The authors also show that there is only minimal price inflation, indicating that these results point to real, and not just nominal, gains for non-recipients. So, where do these gains come from? Are non-recipients running down their savings in order to keep up with their neighbors' increased consumption? Or are they receiving money from friends who qualified for the transfers? The authors show that neither of these can explain the results. Instead, higher consumption by non-recipients is driven by higher earned income. Thus, the chain of events is the following. Recipient households use their transfer to buy more goods from local enterprises. 
This increases firm revenues and gets passed on in the form of higher wages. Those higher wages increase the incomes of non-recipients employed at these firms, and that higher income allows non-recipients to increase their own consumption. This is the multiplier in action, and illustrates how an initial infusion of cash can be magnified and multiplied many times over as it percolates through the economy, ultimately generating aggregate effects that exceed the size of the original stimulus. In this particular setting, the authors estimate a multiplier of 2.7. In other words, a transfer of $1 to the local economy gives rise to an additional $2.70 in increased economic activity. In conclusion, this paper provides some of the first experimental estimates of this important economic parameter and maps out the widespread aggregate effects of a large-scale cash transfer program. The results show that focusing only on recipients may provide a limited window into these programs. Though transfers may be targeted to only a subset of households, their effects ultimately reverberate throughout the local economy. As always, you can check out the full paper and its references to other related research. These include a macroeconomics literature on multipliers, a development literature studying the effects of cash transfer programs, and finally, a broader debate on the role of randomized controlled trials in economics and the kinds of questions they can help us answer.